What's up you guys, it's Levi here. Welcome to another edition of the Cybersecurity Education Channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. So today we're gonna to be talking about part three of the Cybersecurity um, When Traveling series. We're gonna be talking about public computers. In the previous video, we talked about public Wi-Fi. Um, I'll go ahead and, and uh, put a card up here. So if you guys wanna watch that, you can take a look at it. And I'll post the link down in the description below. And then the first video, we talked about public charging stations. So I'll post, I'll post the link down below for that as well. Um, and we're continuing on um, talking about cybersecurity when traveling. Uh, right now, it's a three-part series. We'll see if I we'll see if I put out more videos. I haven't come up with any other topics after this, so we'll see we'll see if we have another one come or if I just keep this at three. So when traveling, there's a lot of times where you might need to use a public computer for some reason. Um, you don't want to use your mobile device or um, you don't have a laptop or tablet and it's just more convenient to use a public computer. Um, you're in an area where that's the only way that you can use the internet. You can't use your cell phone because you're in some country or, re or um, mountainous region that doesn't allow you to use your cell phone. So then you're stuck to a public computer or you just, or you just by habit use public computers all the time. I don't know why my camera keeps focusing and losing focus. So hopefully the rest of this video is fine. <laughs> I keep seeing it focusing in and out. So hopefully it stays good and hopefully you can read the content. So whatever the reason, um, there's gonna be a point in time where you might decide that you wanna use a public computer. Um, so today I'm gonna be talking about the risks of using a public computer and the best practices that you can um, use to protect you guys um, when using a public computer. So risk number one when using a public computer is not smashing that like button. Just kidding. So risk number one, which really, um, which really creates most of the other risks that I'm going to be talking about is malware on the system that you're connected to. So in the last video, we had a reference to a toothbrush. Um, you wouldn't want to go and use a toothbrush that you found on the ground because you don't know where it's been, right? Um, and the same thing applies to public computers. Um, you don't know where the public computer has been and who's been on it. And because of that, your public computer could easily have malware on it when you use it that you don't know about. So the rest of the stuff is kind of subcategories that malware could create. Number two thing, um, there could be a keylogger on the system. So any type of information that you put into the system, um, whether it's like a username or a password or anything that you type in there, if there's a keylogger installed, it's gonna go ahead and send that username and password uh, back to the person that installed the malware. The remote attacker could see anything that you typed and get into your accounts if you didn't have multi-factor authentication turned on or you didn't change your password before they got it. Number three, um, somebody could be remotely controlling the system. So anything that you're doing on the system, they could potentially see your screen and see anything that you're looking at. Number four, website redirection. Um, so an attacker could set it up on a machine. And so uh, popular websites that people log into actually get redirected to their own page. And then information entered on that page is then sent back to the attacker. We talked about this in the previous video. Um, I have a diagram of, of how that works if you want to go back and watch it. But yeah, you enter, <laughs> like the example I gave the last time, um, you go to bankofamerica.com, you try to sign into there, uh, the page looks legit and everything, you put your username and password in, and then that website, you're actually getting redirected to the attacker's webpage, which is actually fakeofamerica.com, but in the address bar, everything looks fine, and you don't know the difference. Um, then you, you go to log into the page and you, you'll probably get an error or something and you're like, oh, the site's just down right now or there's a problem with the connection. Not think of it, not think of it at all. When the attacker's sitting there in the background, they have your information, they can break into your account, especially if there's no multi-factor authentication turned on. Um, the number five thing that can happen to you is it, let's say you want to insert a USB key inside of that um, public computer because you want to print something. Well, you, you have the potential uh, for your USB key to get infected. You plug that USB key back into your computer. And then that malware is then transferred to your computer. And all of the above things could possibly apply to your computer. Um, not only that, you could potentially get ransomware on your computer. 
So as soon as you plug in that USB key, it goes and executes ransomware and then all of your files are encrypted and you can't access any of your files without paying the ransom. I've done a video on ransomware before. I'll put a card up here so you guys know what to do if you get ransomware and how to prevent ransomware. But yeah, these are the five things that can really spur from malware. And then number six, um, the attacker could put a device watching traffic between that public computer and um, the internet service provider. So then anything that you're viewing on the computer that's not encrypted, that's not an HTTPS site, um, the attacker can pick up on that connection and see all the information that's going across. So those are some of the risks of using a public computer. Now we're going to be talking about uh, best practices for using a public computer. So the number one best practice is to plan ahead before your trip. Um, and to, to go along with this, um, Make it so that you're doing all that you can to not have to be using a public computer. If you don't have to use a public computer, you reduce that risk, you get rid of all of those risks associated with it. Um, a public computer is just more susceptible to getting malware and these bad things to happen to it because it's sitting out there in the open. A malicious person can go up to that computer and do something to it and nobody will know about it. So you really want to plan ahead so that you don't have to use a public computer, uh, playing ahead by doing all your financial financial stuff before you go on your trip, um, and any type of um, duties where you need to log into a website, uh, printing off tickets or anything that you need, um, things like that so that you don't have to use a public computer then. With that, number two is sticking to using your own devices and not using a public computer. So, you know, try, try to strictly use your cell phone, um, tether your tablet, your laptop off of that, and then follow the security procedures of connecting to Wi-Fi and trying to avoid Wi-Fi if possible. Um, if you stick to using your mobile device or your tablet and things like that, then you also get rid of your risk of using public computers. So obviously there's going to be situations where you have no option, where you have to use a public computer, um, whether you're out in the middle of nowhere and that's the only option, that's the only option available to you because you don't have cell phone service, they don't have public Wi-Fi there. Um, or you're in a foreign country where that's really the only option that you have. So tip number three in this area, um, avoid financial sites or sites with any type of private information that you don't want out there. So like healthcare sites, banking sites, um, things like that. Because like we talked about before, um, any information that you, 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 you enter on that computer, if it's got malware, um, you have to assume that that information could be public information to somebody that um, has remote access to the computer and can see that information. So I know there's going to be times where you have to put stuff in there or you have to go to a financial site because you forgot to pay a bill or something. You don't have access to your mobile device and things like that. Um, if you have to do that, uh, make sure you keep you keep what you're signing into as, to as limited as possible. Don't just go out there and, and freely browse the web like you do at home. You gotta be super careful and preferably avoid signing into sites completely if you can. Number four, if you have to apply it, if you have to sign into sites, make sure that you're using multi-factor authentication on those sites so that somebody can't just go and um, somebody that's spying on that computer can't just go and sign in with your account right after. Um, if you have multi-factor authentication enabled, um, you'd have to go on another device in your email or something like that and approve that device, um, which which this could backfire on you because you might because be, but because you're using a public computer, you might not have another device to use for multi-factor authentication, so you might not be able to get in anyway. But let's say you're trying to print something or something like that, and you have to sign in to an account to be able to print something, well then if you have multi-factor turned on, you can still go on your phone, phone or whatever device, um, except, except whatever site you're signing into so that you can print. Boom, you print, um, and then that person still can't get in there because they don't have that second factor, they would have to break that second factor. But if, you're sec if you have to use the public computer to get into your second factor then using multi-factor authentication might not work for you so that's something to think about um number five number five tip 
when you're using a public computer, after, or after you're done using a public computer, make sure to log out of all your accounts that are on there. Delete any files that are on there, you know, out of the recycling bin, out of the trash as well, not just out of the main area. Um, and make sure that you log out. If you aren't doing these things, it's, it's possible for anybody, not just an attacker, to come up to that computer and access your account or um, access the files that you're using on the system. So you, don't, you wanna make sure that you're signed out of your accounts and you wanna make sure that you delete any files that you have on the system. <laughs> Good hotels should have solutions that should automatically um, clear the computer after a certain period of time, but there's no guarantee on that. The majority of hotels aren't gonna care about cybersecurity, they're gonna care about making the most money. Someone might have good cybersecurity practices going on in their systems and other ones won't. Um, you have to make sure that you're the one that's providing the security yourself. You can't rely on others to do it for you. Um, number six, so let's say you have all the devices that you need, but you have to be able to print concert tickets or something like that. Um, and public computer you think is your only option. Uh, what you could try to do is you could try to call the hotel attendant and um, try to have them print it off. So then you just send them the file, they print it, and then you're good to go. You don't have to get on that computer and sign in or plug a USB stick in or anything. Number seven tip is to only log into sites that are using HTTPS, TLS. Um, if they don't, if we're not a secure connection, if we're not using an HTTPS connection, uh, um, the tr when you send that login information and it's going across the wire, that login information can be captured by anybody that has a device in between that public computer and going out to the internet. Um, so you want to make sure that all the sites that you're using to log into have HTTPS and TLS so that your password can't be picked up that way. Um, in 2019, really every website should have this. This shouldn't be something that you have to worry about a lot. If a site you're going to doesn't use HTTPS and TLS, even on your own personal computer, you should really evaluate whether you're using that site in the first place in 2019. I mean, HTTPS, TLS has been out for a long period of time. Any, any, any good site should have it by now. So number eight, I've already talked about it before, but try to avoid using public computers. Uh, I really try to avoid using them if you can, you know, do anything that you can to not use them. The risk is super high to using public computers. All of us have cell phones. Um, we have tab, we have tablets, we have laptops. Um, try to stick to those mediums if you can, um, and then try to use other methods like we talked about here. You know, we're ha you're having an attendant print, uh, you're planning ahead, things like that. Just try to avoid using public computers. So in today's video, we learned about the risks of using public computers and we learned about the best practices of using public computers. Basically, you don't want to use public computers because um, you don't know who's been on the computer. Malware can be easily deployed to the computer and cause a lot of bad things for you. And then you want to follow these best practices that we talked about if you have to use public computers so that you reduce the risks involved. Um, and then you really, really want to try to do everything that you can to not use public computers. So I hope this video really helps you guys out. I hope it saves you guys from having problems in the future. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.